Holy Father, may I present General Helm, commander of the SS in Italy. Holiness, I've come to pay you my respects. And to inform you officially that the German army is in total control of Rome. In other words, General, your forces have occupied our city. And I'm to convey the viewer's personal guarantee that Vatican neutrality will continue to be respected. In return, I would ask Your Holiness to confirm in your communiques German troops, particularly SS detachments, are behaving correctly and with restraint. I shall be happy to report that you have asked me to confirm that, General. May I present Colonel Herbert Kappler? Colonel Kappler has been personally selected by Weissfuhrer Himmler as head of police in Rome. I'm relieved to hear that the German police consider it their duty to protect ordinary citizens. My duty is to maintain order in the streets, discourage resistance, and to round up escaped prisoners. Prisoners? After Italy's capitulation, many enemy prisoners of war escaped from prison camps. We were left unguarded. We have reason to believe that large numbers are heading for Rome. Some may even be making for the Vatican to seek refuge. These, of course, will be arrested before they reach here. But in case of unfortunate incidents, I intend, with your permission, to have a white line drawn across the opening of St. Peter's Square. The line will show the exact start of Vatican territory and at the same time make my men aware of it and prevent any of them, any armed German soldiers, from violating it. Well, I thank you for your consideration, Colonel. And I can only hope that our relations between the Church and your armed forces will remain as reasonable. Good day, gentlemen. It's certainly a relief, Holy Father. They seem prepared to act reasonably. He must have been very sure of my permission. Kapler is the one to watch, of course. This white line. It is not meant merely to keep his men out. It is a reminder to us of our authority, of how far we can go. Don't be afraid to hit me. Come on. Watch it now. That's the boy. Are you all right? Yes. All right. Now, are you the trick? A lean into the left when you're going to hook. That's when you leave yourself open. Try to remember that. But this is the Vatican. Please, just let us speak with someone. United States, Americano, English, Tommy, up, up. B-17. Crashed. Bomber. Bomber, savvy? No. Via, via. I thought they had to give us shelter. I thought they had to help anyone who asked. Bleeding eye times. There's no need to go running away. You speak English? Well, after a fashion, the name's of Flaherty. You lads look terrible. Could you do with a bite to eat and a place to stay? Come on. 
Well, I'd advise you to trust me, or you'll end up in Regina Chaley Prison by nightfall. Now, come on, follow me, and don't be talking out loud in English. <laughs> In you go now. No one's going to stop you. Third floor, room at the end of the passage. I have a bit of business to see to, and I'll join you as soon as I can. In you go. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, uh, what is this place? No speak of the lingo. <laughs> Some kind of hostel, isn't it? It seems like it. But I'm not sure if it's good. Isn't you here? You? Hugh O'Flaherty. How silly of me. I can see he isn't. I'm sorry I haven't introduced myself. I am Francesca. Francesca Lombardo. And you? I'm Lieutenant Manning, U.S. Air Corps, and this is Corporal Tate, British Sixth Armored Division. When were you captured? My name is Lieutenant Jack Manning. My number is 0764. If you're only going to repeat your name, rank, and number, Lieutenant, the conversation is going to be terribly one-sided. I was picked up in North Africa, miss, when Tobruk fell. A lieutenant was shot down a few weeks ago. We were in a camp south of here, and yesterday the Germans shoved us all into some cattle trucks. We didn't fancy a trip to the Third Reich, so we jumped off and stole some clothes. I see. And uh, what about you? Are you Italian? My late husband was Italian, but I am from Malta. So you could say I was British. Well, well. And now you just sort of live here with Mr. O'Flaherty. <laughs> I don't actually live here, but I call in quite often. Where is he now? In his office, I expect. He's kept pretty busy. Well, you've had something to eat, have you? Good. And you met Mrs. Lombardo. Well, now, what are you doing in Rome? The Vatican's neutral, right, sir? That's what the chaps always said. If you get stuck, make for the Vatican. Well, the trouble was, so many people were given sanctuary during the early days of the war. Vatican was about to burst at the seams, so the gates had to be shut. What about this place? This is a religious hostel on Vatican territory. Safe enough for the moment. Excuse me, sir. Are you some kind of bishop? <laughs> Not nearly that exalted, just a Monsignor. Come in. Ah, oh, Victorio. I've got what you wanted. Ah, the boy. This is my old pal, Father Victorio. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Ah, that's just the ticket. Some decent clothes will spruce you up a bit. Lieutenant Manning can wear one of mine. Where are you going to put them? San Sepulcro? Well, that's where I put that last lot. I've got the RAF bunch at Via Mazzini. I think we'll try the Ursuline convent. There's no more room at the convent, but I know where they can go. Home with me. Oh, no, you don't. That's altogether too risky. I'm not even going to consider it. Well, you're going to have to, because I want to help. And this time, you're not going to put me off. But that's the way it is, is it? It is. Well, all right. Only for a couple of days. The old tweed golf jacket, that'll do you fine. It's a good thing you're pro-British, Father. Holy mother, that's the first time I've ever been accused of that. <laughs> Unbelievable as it is, it's real. You know something, Mina? It's mine. And if you are nice to me, I'll give it to you. Daddy, Daddy! Ah! Stop it, Papa, you must my hair. Oh, you're your mother's daughter, Lisa, eh? <laughs> look, look! I'll tell you something, children. When I was little more than a boy, I came here to this city. I walked everywhere. I 
saw every street and square, and I fell in love with Rome. <laughs> no, it's true. And I always promised myself that one day I would come back to claim her. What's that, puppy? That's the Vito Emanuel monument. Looks like a wedding cake, huh? <laughs> and there, Hazel, there is the Campidoglio, where the Temple of Jupiter stood. All the Roman emperors used to celebrate their triumphs in war. What's that, puppy? St. Peter's at the Vatican. Oh, where's the Colosseum? Well, you can't see it from here. Can we go there, puppy? Yes, I'll take you when I have time. I want to go now. I told you I'll take you there soon. Maybe tomorrow. We can go anywhere we like. Rome is ours. Per Piazza Navona, dove si scende? Scusi, dove si fa la fermata per Piazza Navona? La terza fermata, signora. Grazie. Prego. Documenti. Porti. Documenti. Andiamo, Sberti, andiamo? E voi? Documenti. Un altro. Adesso. Documenti. Mm. E voi? Alberto. Ancora, andiamo. Poi, commento. This way, please. Good evening, Monsignor. Good evening, Amelia. You remember our friend Simon, don't you? Ah, yeah, you're sure, the one who's at medical school. How's it all going? It was going well, Monsignor. Till the Germans came. My family is Jewish. They know what may happen. This is my elder daughter, Julia. My other daughter, Emilia. And our friend, Simon Weiss. These gentlemen are Allied soldiers. They're going to stay with us for a while. We're very grateful to you, Mrs. Lombardo, but we won't be here long. 
As soon as we've rested, we'll uh, head for the Allied lines. Well, there's not a chance, lad. The whole German army's between you and your people in Salerno. In a couple of days, I'll have you move somewhere more permanent. We'll see about that. Oh. Come on, let's get things ready. In the meantime, please don't worry. Things will be a bit crowded, but we'll manage. I'm sure we will. Be like a rescuer after what we've been through, man. Well, don't get carried away, lads. This isn't all fun and games, you know. If there's any trouble, your duty is to get out fast. Don't tell anyone where you've been hiding, whatever happens. If you're captured, you'll only be put in jail. Mrs. Lombardo and her daughters will be shot. Uh, a report on known black market operators, sir. Yes, next. A report on the city's water and electricity supplies, sir. Next. A list of suspected members of resistance groups. They must be kept under surveillance here. The first sign of trouble. Round them up. Sir. What is the latest on those escaped prisoners? A number have been picked up, sir. Uh, 53. Only 53? Army intelligence said hundreds were heading for Rome. Uh, they cannot be here yet. I don't accept that, Hirsch. They must be finding places to hide before we can arrest them. Uh, most of the men picked up, sir, were heading for the Vatican. They seem to think they would be given shelter there. I see. Up to a few months ago, a committee of the Holy Office was in charge of welfare in the Italian camps. What is it, uh, this Holy Office? Uh, it's the secret court of the Catholic Church, sir. It used to be known as the Inquisition. Indeed. Now, it, it handles all cases of divorce, uh, heresy, uh, challenges to the faith, and so on. And this committee? A welfare group uh, set up by the Pope. But it was headed by uh, Cardinal Crespini. But it was largely run by a man named O'Flaherty. O'Flaherty, what is he? A Monseigneur, sir, a high-ranking official in the Holy Office, a sort of religious lawyer. What else? There's no more information, sir. But we could find out more about him, his associates, the people around him. Yes, well, don't spend too much time on it. Still, it might be useful at least to know where he fits in, this uh, Monsignor O'Flaherty. Coffee, Monsignor? Well, I wouldn't say no. That smells like the real article. I believe it is. Mr. West seems able to maintain a regular supply, though I'm careful not to ask how. Well, now, Sir Darcy, let's get back to business. Ah, oh, yes. Some uh, 40 Allied escapers, you say? They're mostly British, a few Americans, some French. I've been hiding them out in various colleges, monasteries, a couple of private homes. Well, that's very fine of you. A splendid effort. Yeah, well, the point is, they're going to be a lot more. Are you sure of that? Well, nothing could be more certain. It's going to be a major problem. They've got to be housed, fed, and clothed. I've done all that I can on my own. Now you'll have to take over. Oh, but I cannot possibly become involved, Monsignor. I can't take any responsibility for it. What are you saying to me, man? In the name of God, you're the British minister. But my dear man, I've been a prisoner here in the Vatican since the beginning of the war. This work of yours needs someone who can move about. You must understand that as minister to the Holy See, my strictest duty is to do nothing which might compromise the neutrality of the Vatican State or of His Holiness the Pope. Though naturally, this whole business upsets me dreadfully. I've had enough. Well, since most of them are British, I naturally thought I should come here. If you'll pardon me, I think I've taken up enough of your time. Well, it was kind of you to call and fill me in on the problem, but really, my butler, Mr. West, he knows more about what's going on than I do. Most kind of you. 
not my concern. Sir. So dreadfully sorry. Come in. Mr. West. Sorry to interrupt you at your work, sir. You'd better be careful what you say. Yes, I didn't think you looked too happy when you left us, sir. Hmm. Well, it may surprise you to learn that I was born and raised in Ireland. During the trouble, some of my closest friends in college were shot by the Black and Tans. So I have my own opinion of the English, and it's just been beautifully confirmed. Yes, I understand we're not too popular in certain parts of Ireland, sir. However, the minister would like you to have this. Sixty thousand lira. Yeah, well, Sir Darcy's sorry, sir. It's all he can spare at the moment. It's for food and clothes and stuff for the escapers. Oh, he's changed his tune, has he? Oh, Lord love you, sir. <laughs> Which I'm sure he does. Uh, no, he, he meant what he said. The Vatican's neutrality is really most precarious. The minister has to be very careful, but he's keen to assist you in any way he can, in secret. I might have known. Frank, with you. I'm a bit hot tempered. Is that a fact, sir? One of my little character flaws. Well, <laughs> I'll admit that this money is a great relief. Food and all the rest of it, as you well know, are getting scarce and expensive. Well, that's where Sir Darcy thought I might come in handy, sir. Now, I've managed to keep up some contacts. I've got one or two friends in the black market. Have a chair. Oh, thank you very much, sir. The big problem, if there's to be as many escapers as you expect, will be finding Italian civilians willing to hide them. Provided, that is, you intend to carry on with the job, sir. Well, that's another thing. I mean, that's the reason I went to see your boss. If someone doesn't do something quick, all those people are going to be in mortal danger. Well, that's right, sir. Well, I've got a few friends I could call on. Yep, so have I. Meanwhile, you and I could start organizing things. Well, in what way, sir? Mr. West, how'd you like to go into the real estate business? Mi piace molto. Lo prendo. Grazie, signora. Fine, we'll take it. This is the best yet, Alfred. It's certainly the most expensive. And also the safest. They'd never think of looking here. Right. Just found the corner from Gestapo headquarters. <laughs> what do you mean you're not going to let us in? No vain. Il Uffizio. Isn't there someone we can talk to? Lieutenant Barnett, sir, Royal Tank Corps. Holy mother of God, Lieutenant, this is St. Peter's Square, not a parade ground. Oh, sorry, sir. I understand you can help us. Well, I might. Now, we're not changing the guard at Buckingham Palace. Can you just walk along behind us like normal people? Lads, this is our safest house. Keep it for emergencies. In a day or two, you'll be moved somewhere a little less elegant. Born in Ireland, sir, of peasant stock, late entry into the Jesuit college where he was known for his strong anti-British sentiments. Is that so? Appointed vice-rector of propaganda at the college here in Rome at the age of 28, then Vatican charge d'affaires in Egypt. He'd been transferred to the diplomatic service? Yes, sir. 
Well, well. A resourceful man. What is this note, uh, Czechoslovakia, 1936? I, I don't know, sir. Well, where did the information come from? Uh, from Beck, sir. Of the secret police. He is outside. So, bring him in. Explain this note for me, Czechoslovakia, 1936. That is when a flyer to you was sent there, sir. The purpose of his mission has never been discovered. But in 38, when he returned to Rome to join the Holy Office, several of the people whom he was associated with and whom the Gestapo wanted to interview disappeared. He helped them to escape? Well, nothing is certain. Only that he was connected with them. I have put him under surveillance as you ordered, but my men can only follow him once he crosses the white line. So far, they have nothing of interest to report. But I am interested, Beck. Very interesting. Keep watching him. Anything more you can learn, I want to know at once. At your orders, Kelly. Flat market prices are rising, Monsignor, almost every day. It's supply and demand. We'll need at least 200 lira a week for interest capital. That means we'll have to pass the hat round again. Mine's the largest, so we'll leave that to me. <laughs> yes, Reverend Mother. Clothes, Monsignore. We need boots and shoes, and many of the men are seriously ill. They need treatment. Father Morosini, it's your department. The hospital of Santa Croce is in my parish. The pharmacist promised us whatever medical supplies he can spare. First rate. Anything else? If I could make a suggestion, sir. We've got a lot of men here, trained men. Are they just going to sit around? No. We can use them for a sabotage, or a cutting lines of communications, or setting explosives. An army without guns, half of them wounded, half starving. All over Rome, partisan groups are being formed. Father, Father, if that's what you want, then join one of them. We're not a resistance group. We're not here to be blown up trains. But, Monsignore... Let me say it once and for all. As priests, it's our duty to do all we can to help those in danger, the victims of the war. We're not here to add to the killing. Forgive me, Monsignore. Now, back to business. Count Langenthal, you're talking about spare rooms. Well, they're getting scarcer and scarcer, but we managed to dig up a few. Good. You have no idea how many escapers come to me at the Swiss consulate, but uh, I have to be able to tell them where to go. Well, I've been thinking about that. I want you all to pass the word. I'll be near the steps of St. Peter's, if anyone needs me, every afternoon from 3 till 5. That might be a bit dodgy, sir. You could be setting yourself up as a target. Oh, don't worry, my boy. I'll only be a target for the pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> Rabbi Leone. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Buonasera. Relax, gentlemen, relax. You will have noticed uh, how few Jews have been bothered, and not one single piece of Jewish property has been damaged since the SS took control in Rome. You and your families are quite safe. Please understand, Colonel. We have heard stories, rumors, Allied propaganda, I suspect. But I promise you that there will be no ill treatment, no deportations to forced labor or so called death camps. You can take it from me, these camps do not exist. 
You and your families will be treated exactly the same way as any other Italian. Thank you, Colonel. You have spoken frankly, so must I. These are words we never expected to hear. There is one small point, however. I have shown you my good faith. To show yours, I must ask the Jewish community to pay an indemnity of one million lire and 100 pounds in pure gold. This must be delivered to this office within 36 hours, or I'm afraid I may not be able to keep my guarantees. Such an amount of gold is impossible to raise in such a short time. Colonel, I beg you, please give us a little longer. I'm sorry. 36 hours. Starting now. A hundred pounds of gold. The elders say we have to trust Kapler. They say that somehow we must try to raise the full amount. This Colonel Kapler, he gave his word, did he? Like he told them there are no extermination camps. Hold on, Simon, just hold on. I've got a lot of friends. They've got friends. You tell Dr. Leone, we'll all pitch in and do what we can. Here. Doesn't weigh much, but it's a start for you. Exactly 100 pounds, sir. Exactly? To the ounce, Colonel. Thank you, Doctor. Typical. They swore they had no gold, but they could find it quickly enough when they had to. So it seems. And now they're going out free. We should have asked for twice as much. You're too greedy, Hirsch. Didn't want to make it impossible for them. Sir? If we had raided their ghetto, how long would it have taken us and how much would we have found? At best, less than half. We'll let them do our work for us. My arm is killing me. You shouldn't have got your tank shut out for Monday, you lieutenant. I thought you said this was a shortcut, Padre. I so it is. We'll cut through the old ghetto just up ahead. Could we slow down just a little? Not on your life, Lieutenant. That's Regina Celi Prison, where you'll wind up if you're tangled with one of the German patrols. Those look like Italians on guard, Father. So they are, poor devils. Working for the Gestapo now. We're trying to arrange for some artistic reproductions of Vatican passes. Good as the real thing. Even with them, you're going to have to watch your stuff. Quick, the both of you, split up. Remember the address, Via Gaccini, 21.
why stay out of it? Why are you doing this? We need more people in the work camps. These have been chosen. The chosen people. But their security was guaranteed. They paid for it. Who gave these orders? Colonel Coupler. Take it up with him. Cut. And you make a wish. You, you, you throw her in, huh? and your wish will come true. Mama said if you throw in a coin, it means one day you'll come back to Rome. <laughs> but that's a wish that's bound to be granted. Because we're never going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> trouble I'd taken to land in a bunker. The bishop hit his ball out mighty swipe, and it disappeared. <laughs> wasn't on the fairway and wasn't in the rough. Where was it? It had ricocheted off a tree, hit the fence, and bounced into the back of an open truck, which took it all the way to Genoa. <laughs> it was the longest drive in history. <laughs> Good evening, Count Langenthal. Well, Signore, I am always sure to meet you at Prince Matteo's parties. I uh, have another six packages arriving tomorrow. Where can I put them? Six more. Now, that'd be at 63 Via Rienzi and the apartment in Piazza Luca. Yeah. yeah. You are socializing with the Swiss Council, I see, Monsignore. Oh, one meets all the best people at your parties, Prince Matteo. And at least four of them hiding escape prisoners. Don't worry, I won't say anything. Uh, I know, you're interested in paintings of the Roman school. I have one you haven't seen before. I'd appreciate your opinion of it. Uh, please. You don't deny what I said. You seem very well informed. I have known of your work for some time, and I'm ashamed to have done nothing. I believe you're short of money. Well, that's a slight understatement. We're flat broke. It is risky to draw out large amounts too often. Here are 300,000 lira. I'll give you more as soon as I can. I want to give you some warning. Warning? What about? Yes, I hear things. For instance, the Gestapo is watching you. Where are they now? Well, that will keep him out of trouble. Don't take it so lightly, my friend. Uh, but Kapler is an extremely dangerous man.
seen at all the most fashionable restaurants, at all the best parties. He is as much a playboy as a priest. Perhaps. Beck, have you learned anything more? We heard he helped organize a gold collection for the Jews. Shall we pick him up? No. You could always sweat a confession out of him, Colonel. It's a delicate situation, Beck. It calls for kid gloves, not your rubber truncheon. Monsignor Flaherty is an important Vatican official, a protege of the Pope. We cannot touch him without proof. People in the city must help him. Does that go for them, too? It does not. It's time these Italians were taught a lesson. I want checkpoints at every major street and random checks on identity papers throughout the city and a curfew starting tonight. Sir? No civilian to be allowed out after dark without special permission, anyone without a permit to be arrested, and anyone who does not stop for questioning to be shot on sight. And I want guards on that white line. Until these people learn who their friends are, the shutters down on the I am told that for the first time in living memory, our work at the Holy Office is nearly up to date. Well, get in there, Your Holiness, slowly but surely. Walk with me, my son. Our work here is never easy, but the war has made it infinitely more complicated. Every day the white line becomes more like a prison wall. And every day we become more aware of all the suffering outside. So many calls for help. One does what one can, Holy Father. Each of my priests must do as his conscience tells him. I only ask that whatever action is taken, it does not affect Vatican neutrality. However, although officially I am unaware of my priests' activities, it also means that there is very little that I can do to save any of them. If they are caught. We are going to need more food. This will mean moving about more. I was wondering if we could use neutral passports. 
Well, we have a few Swiss and Spanish for emergencies, but to get more, or even good forgeries, is almost impossible. I think you'll have to rely on the Vatican passes for now. Oh, Francesca, we were that worried about you. Sorry, I'm late. German patrol stopped me twice. I thought I'd never get here. Well, we've not time to recap, I'm afraid. It's almost time for Capra's unholy curfew. Jack will fill in later. We're now looking after over 1,700 escapers, 1,726 to be exact. And that means tighter security. From now on, when we contact each other, it'll be through code names. Go ahead, Harry. Nothing elaborate. The simpler a code name, the easier it is to remember, and hopefully the harder for the enemy to break. Now, Francesca, you'll be Malta. The Monsignor will be Golf. <laughs> Father Vittorio will be Vicky, Mr. West, Jeeves, Count Langenthal, Edelweiss, Simon, Doc, and Father Morosini, Boots. <laughs> I'll be Tommy, and Lieutenant Manning will be Joe. And what is my good name? We thought we'd call you Big Mama. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're going to have to break up before sunset. We have to run and hide in our own city. When in my parish people need a priest after dark, I cannot even go to them. At the moment, the Germans are making the rules, Father. But we can be thinking up one or two ways to twist them around. Clear away the mattresses. No, no, we'll do that. Just collect your things. Take them to St. Monica's convent. Via Lucchini. Good luck, right. ma'am. Emilia. Come on. Sorry. Come on, don't be frightened. You're a great girl. Help me put the mattresses back on the beds. Then clear up everything you see lying around. Hurry! Hurry! <laughs> My daughters. Nothing, sir. May I ask what you're looking for? Escaped prisoners and deserters. Who else lives here? There's only the three of us. seen Father Gatti. 9.30, you review the evidence in the Di Stefano divorce. They're still battling, are they? Sorry, if I'm uh, interrupting. Oh, Vittorio, it's all right. Come on in. We'll finish that off later. Father Gatti arrives. Ask him to wait, please. Sit down, Vittorio. How do you get through it all? Well, I once worked on a farm. It's just the same. You start early and you stay late. I've been hearing some gossip, Hugh. It's worrying. And if you wouldn't listen to it, you wouldn't be worried. There are people here in the Vatican who 
are jealous of your success. Ah, who'd be jealous of a Monsignor? You have enemies, you. In the Vatican? Why would I have enemies here? They say your work for the escaped prisoners proves you are unorthodox. Vittorio, I'm not going to start worrying about politics. But you must think about your future. Listen to this. Colonel Herbert Kapler, born Halberstadt, Germany, son of a doctor, personally recruited into SS by Reinhard Heydrich. 1938, organized deportation of Austrian Jews to concentration camps. Transferred to Belgium, where he put down an insurrection in Brussels with many reported atrocities. Add to that. In the last six months, he's supervised the deportation of Roman Jews. He's organized mass roundups of people for slave labor and personally ordered the torture of hundreds of civilians. Talk about my career, my little enemies in the Vatican. Here's the real enemy. Padre. What is it, Harry? There's bad news. Father Morosini's been arrested at one of the checkpoints. Arrested? Why? He was carrying guns. He's been taken to Gestapo headquarters. As well as helping us, he's been working for the resistance as a courier. I should have known he was something like that. Where was he picked up? Via Alighieri, Mrs. Lombardo's sector. You better warn her immediately. And all of our people in that area. Start moving as many as you can to other sectors. They won't force him to talk. I mean, they wouldn't talk to a priest. Get moving, Harry. Get moving. Hold him. understand you possess information that we must have. I have no information. For the good of your country, please help me to put an end to the violence. You're a priest. Surely you want that too. I have no information. I won't even let you become a martyr, Father. I will have you taken to Regina Celli to be shot by your own countrymen. Surely you see it's pointless to go through all this? When all you have to do is to give us a few names, and it's over. Is there any word? Only that Father Morosini refused and still refuses to name anyone. They've taken him to Regina Celi prison. Well, have you found out what's to be done with him? The Holy Father broke his rule and appealed to the German high command for a pardon. They said they could not interfere. The decision to execute him or not lies with the SS commandant. Kapler.
my countrymen. I die for love of our country. To which and to God, I dedicate my last thoughts. Viva l'Italia. I forgive you. Party present aim fire Shoot him! He's a priest! I got the loveliest blue dress, sort of off the shoulders. Not really very expensive. I shall wear it for New Year's Eve. And a suit for France, and a pretty little party dress for Lisa. Ruthie, can we open our presents? Of course, why not? And then we had lunch at a wonderful restaurant at Piazza Nervona. Oh, Herbert, it's so beautiful. We have to eat that together. Herbert. Mm? You're not listening. Of course I was. You look very tired. Was there something wrong? Hmm? Well, nothing special. It's usual problems, that's all. Oh, it's Italian. I wanted a Bavarian doll. I told you. Look, Betty. Oh, Herbert. Don't they see enough guns everywhere? That's what he wanted. And it's good for him to get used to them. In this world we live in. Happy Christmas. <laughs>
Can you believe it, gentlemen? One week ago, the Americans and British landed at Anzio, only 30 miles southwest of Rome, and not a single German between them and the city. And then, for some reason, some unfathomable reason, they didn't advance. The time they wasted digging themselves in was enough for us to bring up tanks and artillery. And now, we've closed the gap with two army corps and the mortars and dive bombers on the night and day. The Führer must hear about this. There you have it, gentlemen. The Anzio beachhead has been contained. Rome is as safe as ever. <laughs> Even more so, General. The landing brought out many partisans in the streets, so we were able to round them up. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. But I also hear that there are large numbers of enemy prisoners among them, Colonel, and that suggests that even in Rome, there were more than we suspected. Many have been rounded up, sir. Soon I shall be in a position to arrest the others. I'm relieved to hear that. Reisfer himself has asked me what is being done about them. I am fairly certain that um, this organization, which is helping these prisoners, is being run by one man, a priest. Then deal with him, deal with him quickly. Reisfer doesn't deal in supposition, he wants results. Last apartment check. Come on, let's go home. Do we have to go right away? Your mother would kill me if she knew I'd take you with me. You never got a chance to be alone. Okay, we'll take the long way home. Thank you, Commander Torrey. Thank you. And thank you for looking after our friends. Ah, oh, good evening, Tom. Monsignore. Are you enjoying the opera, Mrs. Lombardo? Very much. Thank you, Count Langen. It's nice to be reminded of what life used to be like. Could our friends in trust Avery? Possibly entertain a few more visiting monks if I were to send them round tomorrow. Yes, I think we could manage that, Monsignore. Well, shall we be getting back for another dose of Puccini? <laughs> Civilian Records Office. Nationality? Irish. Passport, please. Oh, I don't carry it with me. Wait over there, please. I, I don't understand. This has never been questioned. Colonel Kaplan's orders. Vatican passes are no longer valid. Are they all? Next. Look at me. Dai, pass. Avanti.
What will they do? Nothing till the morning. They'll check out his name at the Irish Embassy. But that's the false name on the bus. They'll find Don't out. Take that... on so last. Now we're going to think of something. Come along. Do you see something, Larry? Yes. Someone I very much want to meet. Francesca. What is it? It's Catler. I've half an idea he wants a word with me. You and Julia run along now with the Count. Go straight home, mind. Off you go. I don't believe we met. Well, I'm sure I would have remembered, Colonel. Uh, my dear, this is Monsignor Vlati of the Holy Office, my wife. Monsignor. Good evening, Mrs. Kaplan. The Holy Office. Is that part of your church? We like to think so. And my aide, Captain Hirsch. Captain? Well, I'm delighted to meet you at last, Colonel. I've heard so much about you. And I have you. <laughs> Did you enjoy the opera, Monsignor? Enormously. Puccini is my favorite. Uh -huh. Ah, so we have something in common. Perhaps we can discuss it one day, uh, among other things. Well, that would be delightful. I uh, hope you will be my guest, in fact, in the near future. That would depend on how long you're going to stay in Rome. I intend to be here for a very long time. Oh, Flaherty. That's Irish, isn't it? Well, indeed it is, ma'am, as Irish as McGinty's goat from the land of saints and scholars and leprechauns. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very primitive country, I believe. <clears throat> I doubt to hear if the Monsignor would agree with you. He will tell us it is a modern democracy now. And that's a fact, Colonel, with an elected prime minister, parliament, religious freedom as well. It's a system I'd recommend to you. Well, I mustn't hold you up any longer. Yeah, it's a rare pleasure, Monsignor. We shall meet again, I promise. In the case we don't, I wonder if I might have a little memento of this evening. Would it be asking too much for you to sign my program? Oh. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Ah, your kindness itself. It's been a great privilege to have met with you, Mr. Kapler. Captain Hirsch. Very charming man, isn't he? Indeed. So bad we didn't meet the lady he was with. She was lovely. Yes, I would have liked to have met her, too. Find her. Malta. Tommy. Golf. Vicky. Where did you get this? It was taken from a man we picked up last night. And what do they do with him? He was taken to the Regina Celli until his identity could be checked. I've asked back to bring him here. We are the idiots, Hirsch. Sir. With all our technology, all our experts, we expect something complicated. But suppose this is something really very simple. So simple, in fact, it is actually quite clever. V for via, for instance, street. And the numbers will be house numbers. Yes, perhaps. And the second set? Number of escapers. Yes. Well, the man they picked up will tell us if I'm right. It shouldn't be too difficult to work out on a map exactly what areas these numbers represent. Yes! That man you wanted? Well, bring him in. He was released first thing this morning. What do you mean, released? From the prison. They had an order for his release signed by you. That's ridiculous. I never signed anything. It looks like your signature, Ken. Claire.
Indeed it is, Hirsch, a more successful operation. And are you certain of it? Inevitably. With a little persuasion, the prisoners of war we have will tell us who the others are, and they in turn will lead us to more men, other hiding places. And like ripples in the pond. Exactly. With uh, great pleasure, I shall invite Monsignor Golf to visit us. <laughs> well done, Albert. And I will send a cable at once to Weissfuhr Himmler. Thank you, General. A clean sweep, gentlemen. Pause. Harry Barnett. Yeah, Paddy was out the window when he heard the shots, but he's sure Harry's dead. Well, they've got his code book as well as mine. I'll have to warn the others. Wait a minute, Jack. You're in the Vatican now. You've got to stay here outside. You'd be a marked man. Forget it, Jack. They've already rounded up 65 of your people. We've got to move the rest than the ones in Barnet sector. Well, you save one, you've got to save them all. It's not possible, Monsignor. We've thousands of escapers on the books at the moment, plus all the Italian civilians hiding them. Monsignor, unless you can pull off a miracle, this whole thing's finished. Oh, no. Cap has won a few rounds. He's not yet won the fight. Now, we don't know when or where the Gestapo will strike next. Everyone's in danger. What we've got to do is to move our people, all of them, to safe places immediately. That's going to be some operation. How do we set it up? Well, we can count on all our Italian friends. They're not going to let Kapler win out. Now, let's get started. There's a great deal to be done. Precious little time. I don't think we can do it in time, sir. We'll give it a try, lads. And remember, if we bring this off, it'll be something you can tell to your grandchildren. Coffee pot still hot, fires burning, food on the table, nothing. How did they all get away? He did it, that damn priest. Sir. This is the caretaker. What can he tell us? Go on, tell him. It was him. He wasn't dressed like a priest. But this is the man who rented the apartment. I'll pick him up immediately. I wish it was so easy. What do you mean, sir? He's still protected by the Vatican. I will have to go in and ask for him. Hat in hand. Respected Vatican territory. But it has been violated again and again. Then I suggest you make your report to your authorities, Colonel. I am the authority in Rome. And I tell you that an illegal organization exists which is hiding prisoners of war and is being directed by one of your staff. I want to question him. I regret that will not be possible. You know who I'm talking about. Monsignor O'Flaherty of the Holy Office. He has charges to answer. I'm afraid I cannot give my permission. I ask only out of courtesy. I intend to question him now. I know your methods of questioning, Colonel. Even of priests. May I remind you where you are, and that all my officials here have diplomatic immunity. There is nothing more to be said.
If you wish to create an incident here, Colonel Kepler, then please continue. Yes, I can have a... He's here. In Rome. Yes, yes, of course, at once. Is something wrong? No, 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 nothing. But, Herbert, it's five o'clock in the morning. Will you please tell me what's going on? No, I told you, no, nothing. Go back to sleep. Reichsführer Himmler is waiting for you. I won't forget, you said. The whole thing was taken care of. But why has he come to Italy? Because whatever happens in Rome is likely to affect the whole Italian campaign. I wish I hadn't sent that cable. Best let sleeping dogs lie. This one could bite our heads off. At ease, gentlemen. At ease. Hm. I am delighted to see you again, General Holmes. It's a great honor, Rice Viewer. And you, Colonel Kepler. I am to convey to you, General, the Fuhrer's personal congratulations and the bravery and devotion of the SS throughout this Italian campaign. It is our only wish to be worthy of your trust, Rice Viewer. You have it entirely. Do you find it cold in here? No, sir. Damp air, I expect. Not good for my sinuses. <laughs> Several days ago, Colonel, General Helm sent a cable informing me of your success in rooting out all resistance groups in Rome. Yes, sir. It was most encouraging. I showed it at once to the Fuhrer. The Fuhrer? Read it? More than read it, my dear Colonel. It became the main subject of our discussion. It so happened it tied in with an important policy matter. Now I need to know just how complete your success is. It's a very big city, sir. Over a million inhabitants, and there are bound to be one or two spots of unrest. Quite so, quite so. Colonel? The teeth of the resistance have been drawn, Reichsführer. We have broken the spirit of the partisans. Good. There are no more incidents. Very good. But the report referred specifically to the escape organization, which you said was controlled from the Vatican. You do not mention that. Colonel Kepler has had some success there too, Riceville. Some success? You told me it had been totally destroyed. Uh, not entirely, sir. We closed part of it. In other words, the report was inaccurate. I was misled. Not exactly, sir. I expect to round up those escape what prisoners. What you are admitting is that Rome is still not fully under our control. Is that so? Is that it? I chose you to go to Rome, Colonel, because I knew that you would allow nothing to stand in the way of your success. Nothing. Now I have to go to the Fuhrer at a time when he is under great pressure with the Americans and the British poised across the English Channel with the Danville winter driving our forces out of Russia with our army here in Italy preparing to fall back before it is encircled. I am to go to him and say I was misinformed that the report in which he has made vital decisions was false. 
I could break that organization in one day, Vice Führer. Oh, you could, could you? How? Tell me how. The man who runs it is a priest, protected by the Vatican. If you would just uh, allow me to go in and get him. No, no, no. That is one thing you will not do. It will bring about a crisis affecting policies far beyond this present situation. Rome must belong to us so it can be used as bargaining. You will not enter the Vatican, but you will smash that organization. Do you hear me? You will do it now. I chose you for this job, Colonel Kepler. I would not like to think I had made a mistake. Forgive me, Contessa. When a man in my profession is surrounded by beauty, the only safety is in numbers. <laughs> What in the hell are you doing here? Attending the enemy's parties is the only way to learn what's going on. Well, this is one invitation you should have turned down. Kepler is here. I've seen him. Well, can't there be a load of food supplies delivered to the consulate tomorrow? Some nuns will be around to collect it in the afternoon. Here. Colonel Kaffler, what a surprise. Not for me, Monsignor. I was looking forward to continuing our talk. Were you now? Well, I would have thought we'd covered just about everything there was to say. Ah, but that was before I'd given you my autograph. Before I'd heard of your reputation for being so amusing. You also have quite a reputation. True, but I'm German and know my enemies. You're Irish. How strange to feel such concern for the enemies of your country. Speaking of your enemies, it's just about the entire civilized world, isn't it? I was told you had wit. I find you disappointingly obvious. Oh, forgive me. I just wanted to make sure that you understood my meaning. Do not attempt to provoke me. I had you invited here to give you a warning. After tonight, if you take one step outside the Vatican territory, you'll be arrested on site. Colonel! Do I get the feeling that you'd like to put a crimp in my social life? Damn you! And your social life! You stay behind that white line and you'll spend the rest of the war in Regina Celli prison. Well, the way the war is going, that might not be long at all. You listen to me, priest. No, you, you listen to me. I'm from a neutral country. I have diplomatic immunity. I'm a member of the Holy Office of the Catholic Church. You cannot tell me what to do. I own Rome. Not you, not the Pope. Just because you wear a frock, it won't protect you. Remember your gunner on a priest. I do remember him. And so does every person in Italy who understands the meaning of freedom. Get out. Get out! Go back to the Vatican where you belong. This is your last party.
This is something I wanted you to see, Monsignor. The glories of the Vatican Palace that I used to love so much when I was a boy, now packed away down here. Irreplaceable treasures, Leonardo, Raphael, and relics infinitely more precious of St. Francis, of St. Catherine of Siena, the records and archives, letters, St. Augustine, Martin Luther, even from Henry VIII of England to the Holy Office seeking for a divorce. Nearly 2,000 years of history. Staggers the mind, Holy Father. And here it is now, buried beneath the ground behind steel doors from the threats of shells and bombs, protected from man's inhumanity. Our past is full of bloodshed, Monsignor. Armies have trampled us, yet nothing has changed. Conquerors may come and go, but the eternal church must remain. And so it will, Your Holiness. I have inherited the responsibility of all the popes right back to St. Peter himself. My greatest single duty is to preserve the continuity of the centuries, the heritage and existence of the Holy Church, I have been condemned by many for not speaking out against Nazism, for making a concordat with Hitler, which guaranteed the life of the church in Germany. Was I wrong? It may not have seemed so at that time, Holy Father. Well, perhaps I could have done more. The white line is a very precarious boundary for us now. It's impossible to defend it. I was surprised to see the Palatine guards carrying arms. Only a token. I've learned that Hitler has drawn up plans to invade us and to create a puppet papacy in Liechtenstein under his control. Surely you don't think he'd go as far as that. That depends on many factors. On the progress of the war, on the result of secret negotiations, on how great a danger the Vatican seems to the military authorities here in Rome. I understand the difficulties. I'm glad you do. I'm glad you realize that any activities which give the Nazis an excuse to invade our territory must be avoided at all costs. All such activities must cease. The essence of statesmanship is compromise, Monsignor. I'm not a statesman, Your Holiness. The questions I ask are more simple. I look at things and try to understand them in simpler ways. Yes, what question are you asking yourself now? The only one that seems to matter, Holy Father. What is our duty when we come face to face with evil? We must fight it. If we must fight, how can we compromise with it? In the abstract, we cannot. In practical terms, it is sometimes necessary to proceed slowly and with caution. But isn't that the same as saying it depends on the circumstances? When I was an altar boy, the old priest who taught us used to say, do what is right, come hell and hell, and God will give you the upper hand. Sancta simplicitas. For some, it is easier than others. Is it ever right? to see innocent people in mortal danger and turn your back on them. Holy Father, at this very moment, I'm responsible for the safety of over 4,000 people hidden in Rome and outside the city. So many. I have spoken to you from the heart, my son. You must do what you believe best. Think of what I have said. God guide your decision.
many are dependent on me? Or is that the sin of pride? What should I do? If my life could help you, my friend, I would give it. I can give you the blessing of the church, but only you can decide. Thank you, Prince Patel. There's more I can do to help. Do you have time for some tea? Oh, that's the one thing I can't Please. resist. Only a moment, though. If I don't get back soon, my friends will be as nervous as long-tailed cats in a room full of rocking chairs. <laughs> the Empress of Rome. Masters of the world. Would you like to a puppy? Little like in France, but with a difference. The Roman Empire did not survive. The Reich will last for a thousand years. Yes, Papi. One day, you may take my place. Huh? <laughs> and then in time, your sons will grow up and carry on the work. It's definite. The Germans are pulling back in the south. They can no longer hold their defense lines. They're true to form, though. They'll not give up without a hell of a fight. Still, it's good to hear. Thank you again, Prince. I wish I could do more, Hugh. Like many others, I would like to... The Gestapo. Quickly. Martin, next time I come to the exit, the rest of you up those stairs and spread out. Yeah. Remember, here. I want him alive. This door leads to the kitchen. Hide in one of the storerooms. I'll try to hold him as long as I can. Good luck. What is the meaning of this? You know who I want? It's an outrage. I shall speak to your superiors. Where's he? Where's O'Flaherty? What are you talking about? He was seen here. This was you. Your ridiculous accusation, Colonel. Quite obviously, he's not here. Spread out. Search every room. Finish your work. Get out. Stop, 
round. Don't even move. Who are you? A priest. It's me the Gestapo are after. What do you want me to do? Just climb down the hill. Uh, what do you think? What happens to me if they recognize you? You better hit me, Father. Holy Mother. Are you sure? Right here. God bless you. <laughs>
It was sheer luck they missed. You know that. Keep telling him that, Francesca. But I can't stay cooped up in here. Don't you understand? They are going to kill you. You're coming. Ah, Sister Candida. Come on in. Ah, you're an angel. You're an angel. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. You've done enough, you. It's not so urgent now. The Allies will be here in a few weeks. Hey, are you listening? What on earth are you doing? Buongiorno, Capitano. How about a special portrait of Holiness the Pope, huh? No way. Oh, it's a blessed by the Holy Father himself. Uh, no? No. How about a medallion of St. Christ? Huh? Sir Billy. Very cheap. I told you to leave me alone. Get out of here! Bobbing at me now. I tell your mother to expect three more boarders just for two nights. Oh, and Jack sends his love. Who is he? He's going crazy in the Vatican. I don't think he's cut out to be a priest. But he's fine. Goodbye for now. Get behind and be sweeping. Reported all over the city, sir. Just as a dustman, a coal man, an ambulance driver, a mailman. The angel Gabriel, no doubt. People will swallow any nonsense. Even the ridiculous story that he's dressed up as a nun. People will believe anything about him. He must be stopped. We have tried everything, sir. No. Not quite everything. Not that I'm not glad to see you, Alfred. But where in the holy name did you come from? Well, seeing as they didn't get you outside, it was a safe bet they'd come in after you. So I've been watching your back. God bless you.
darling. That's all right, it's all right. Did you hit him? You never touched the children. You never raised your voice at them in all their lives. thinking I'm that easy to get rid of. Please don't joke. You haven't heard. Heard what? Father Vittorio. Gabler has him at Gestapo headquarters. No. No, no. He left Rome three days ago to visit our billets in the country. He never got there. The SS stopped him. They found money. They think he's a British spy. He's been interrogated at Regina Celli, but has told them nothing. He's being moved tomorrow to a concentration camp in Germany. Oh, my God. I'm going to go to him right away. You know that's impossible. You might as well give yourself up. I'm going to hear his confession and give him absolution. Nothing on God's earth will stop me. What have they done to you, my friend? Severely, you. Here, it's holy water. Dangerous. You should not have gone. Oh, I had to, my dear friend. We shall not meet again, I think. I came to give you absolution. Thank you. I have already made confession to I heard something when they tortured me. You must not go again to Francesca's. 
Why not? Her apartment is being watched. In case you go there. You're sure, Vittorio? Kapler could not make me talk. But he talked as if I, I was already dead. He will have her arrested any time now. Take it with you. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Julia, you take Tate and the others to San Giovanni Maggiore. Tell them that I sent you. This building's being watched, so you better use the cellar door and go out through the back garden. You got friends that you can stay with? Yes. Will you go to them as soon as the others are clear? Don't take anything but your purse. Yes, Monsignore. I'm not leaving Emilia with anyone. She's going with us. I'm going to get you safely out of Rome. There's no doubt about it, Colonel. He was in an SS uniform. He was seen entering the woman's apartment. It must have been him. By the time the alert was put out, he had left the city and driven through the gates. I want every approach to the, to the Vatican sealed off. Put out his description. I want every available man in the streets. And get him. Get him. Allies will be here in a week or so. Germans will be driven out of Rome and you can return. Stay with us. Well, there's nothing I'd want more, Francesca, than to stay here, but I can't. The Germans break our escape line. I have to be there to do what I can. I have a terrible feeling that, that I might never see you again. Well, I told you I'm not that easy to get rid of. Please, you don't go. Sorry. You've given so much of your strength to others. I don't want to take what's left of it. I'm just stubborn. You're the one who's strong. I thought I was. I thought there was a good God looking after us. Who would make sure that everything turned out all right. And he will do. I'll try to believe that. Of course you will. Our forces are on the move again. U.S. and British divisions under the command of General Mark Clark have broken out of the Anzio beachhead and are attacking the Nazi stronghold of Cisterna, driving the enemy into the hills where they are pounded day and night by our tanks and dive bombs. At the same time, the Canadians have broken through the Hitler line and General Alexander's 8th Army has crossed the Malfa River, taking 10,000 German prisoners. The 
battles of Anzio and Casino are over. And in just a few days now, the big one will begin. The battle for Rome. Amayo, moment, bitte. Amayo, moment. Oh, oh, shit. Military headquarters. Mina. First thing in the morning, I want you to pack. What? In two days, three at the most. We evacuate Rome. But you were ready to defend. You said that we had weeks yet. It is not to be defended or attacked, it seems. This way, Rome is saved and we save our army. You, you'll have to give me some, some crates and some boxes and... There's no point. You can only take what you need. But what about my clothes, my furniture? I can't just leave them. You'll have to. Yeah, but I won't. All my things, I just... Don't you understand? You'd be lucky to get away. I don't know what you're talking about. You said there was no danger. What about the children? You said... Listen to me. Listen. Up until yesterday, there was no problem. But now... It's chaos here. There's no transport left. I have to arrange something. Will you come with us? Might not be possible. But you and the children must be ready. Going. There's still something I have to do. What? Herbert? Herbert?
for help, and you are dead. You're going to kill me anyway. Not if you listen. I have come here personally with a message from Colonel Kaplan. He wishes to see you. At Gestapo headquarters, no doubt. This is to be a private meeting. Tonight, just the two of you. Your safety is guaranteed. Guaranteed, is it? Where? The Colosseum. You alone? I am. You're not afraid I'll shoot you? No, if you'd been going to kill me, your man would already have done it in my room. That is so. But believe me, at this moment, nothing would give me greater pleasure. Uh, when it comes down to it, a bullet's your answer to just about everything, isn't it? The only argument you've got. I know what you think of me, you and your church, but you forget. I have my orders. I'm a soldier. I do my duty. You can't hide behind that, Kapler. Don't debase the word duty. My orders were to occupy Rome, control the city. In a war, that means whatever it takes to do it, whether you like it or not. And you think that absolves you of any responsibility? Yes. What is important is the right. Not Rome. What is Rome? All its greatness is over. All that's left is a picture postcard, a playground for whores and priests. There will be a new order in Europe. We are evacuating Rome now, but that means nothing. We will be back. The Third Reich is the future. How many murderous dictators have talked that kind of rubbish? Just look around you, Kapler. You're standing where your ancient friends entertain themselves watching lions tear the Christians to pieces. But the church is still here. A lot of broken stones like these. In a few years, that's all that'll be left of your third rank. Keep your history lesson, priest. You crawl to your pope and obey his orders just as I obey mine. You compare obedience to Hitler with the faith the priest owes to his church? You think that's the same in the name of God? Wait. I know about you and your church. I've been talking to people. I know all about you. What is it you want from me, Kepler? They say that you can't pass a beggar or a lame dog, but that you see yourself with some sort of obligation to look after anyone in trouble. You help British and American prisoners, Jews, Arabs, refugees, anybody. It's a part of your faith. Is that right? Well, I wouldn't deny it. That's why I became a priest. Brotherly love and forgiveness. That's the other half of what you believe. True? True. Well, I'm glad of it, because I have three more for your mercy wagon. My wife and two children. If the partisans get them, they will be killed. I want them out of Rome and safe. That's what I want from you, priest. You're asking me to save your family. 
If you really believe what you preach, you'll do it. You expect me to help you after what you've done? You think you can demand forgiveness? You think it comes automatically just because you want it? I'm not talking about myself. You turned this city into a concentration camp. You've tortured and butchered my friends. You violated every principle of God and man. I can't believe it. After all you've done, you want mercy. I told you, for my family. They're just part of you, part of what you stand for. They've taken whatever they could get without a thought for the suffering all around them. And now, you demand that they be saved. I'll see you in hell first. No. You're no different from anyone else. All your talk means nothing. Charity, forgiveness, mercy. It's all lies. You hear me? Lies! Don't you talk to me about God and humanity. I know what humanity is. It's one half with the power and the will to use it, and the other half only cattle to be led. There's no God. No humanity. You hear me? You hear me? We don't want to wait any longer. We want to be married. Oh, 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 congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> we want you to tie the knot, Padre. It's about time, Jack. I've had the rope ready for months. <laughs> if you'll pardon me, ladies and gentlemen, we've all come through, and it's thanks to one man. I think we ought to have a toast. Monsignor of Monsignor of Thank you, my friends. But if we're to have a toast, I can think of another one. To those we loved, those who cannot be here with us today. Yeah, yeah. This is only the first inquiry into your activities as head of the Gestapo here in Rome. Do you deny the systematic use of torture on suspects? Only the accepted methods of interrogation were used. That is not our information. I only did my duty. Tell us about the pipeline. Now, come now, Colonel. It is quite obvious that after your forces retreated, you were ordered to set up a secret line of communication. Colonel Kapler, we know all about your wife and children. Minna, isn't it? And Franz and Liesel. What do you know? What has happened to them? Now, you're playing games, Colonel. Your wife and children disappeared from Rome. They were smuggled into Switzerland, as you well know, safe and sound. Now, how was it done? Who helped them? It takes some organization. Now, if you tell us how it was done and who helped them, it might do some good at your trial. 
Sen adı ne o? Come on, Colonel. Tell us who was it. Stay where you are, my son. No need to rise. I have only a few moments. This is a great day. I have to speak to our people. But first, I wanted to speak to you. In this imperfect world, you may never receive the honor that is due to you. But I wanted you to know that in my heart, I honor you. I talked to you once of the treasures of the church. Perhaps I deceived myself. The real treasures of the church, what makes it imperishable, is that every once in a while, someone comes to it, my son, like you. May the Lord watch over you. After the liberation, Monsignor Hugh Flaherty was honored by Italy, Canada, and Australia, given the United States Medal of Freedom, and made a commander of the British Empire. Herbert Kapler was sentenced to life imprisonment for war crimes. In the long years that followed in his Italian prison, Kapler had only one visitor. Every month, year in and year out, O'Flaherty came to see him. In 1959, the former head of the dreaded Gestapo in Rome was baptized into the Catholic faith at the hand of the Irish priest, 